Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session on getting started with AWS Cloud. So we'll have a interesting session on how you can, you know, getting started or um, get started with uh, AWS and some basics on cloud computing. Today on the topic we have uh, Mutuswami, uh, who is a AWS Cloud Community uh, uh, member or a builder and. Um, he is also a senior consultant at HCL. He is going to help us better understand the cloud computing or AWS cloud, the basics on it. And um, without any more delay, uh, let's get into the session. The mic and stage is all to um, Mutusami, over to you. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, thanks Suraj, uh, Surak for the excellent introduction. And thanks uh, Skyava for this uh, opportunity to interact with a global audience in this uh, prestigious platform. So the topic for the today is going to be cloud computing and getting started with AWS. As introduced by Suraj, uh, I am Maheshwar Kumar Muthuswami, uh, 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 having experience into IT industry for the last 23 years. So I worked in various countries in US, Europe, Middle East, all these different countries, especially in Europe, in Germany, Italy, France, Switzerland, Denmark, okay, all these places and in Middle East and in US actually. So predominantly with this experience, I put forth uh, all my technical expertise into the field and uh, I currently I work as a senior consultant in HCL. So I started cloud uh, some, some years before. Everybody know the global audience, everybody must have heard and uh, been visible for all of you guys that uh, cloud era has picked up and it is gaining momentum uh, in, uh, in the IT industry. So today I am going to brief you about what is cloud computing and what are the services and deployment models. And I am going to guide you how to get started with AWS Cloud, uh, how do you how you can be able to self drive yourself with the knowledge which I am going to give to you in this session actually? Okay, so without further delay, let's uh, move to the next slide. Let us get into the. So I welcome all the participants from different, different parts of the world. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, every everything. So let's uh, let, let me move into the different other slide now. Start. So it is like. Uh, cloud computing. So this journey starts with introduction to cloud computing. So first we'll come to know what is an, uh, it is an introduction to cloud computing and what are all the cloud computing services are there? And what are the cloud deployment models are there? And uh, introduction to AWS. So how do you get introduced to AWS? And what are the different types of AWS services actually? And AWS console and AWS services in this, we cannot cover all the services, but we are going to predominantly, we are going to see the main four basic services, which is EC2, S3, IAM, and CloudWatch. And uh, what is AWS architecture? I will give you a brief introduction about uh, what are the certifications, AWS certifications you can primarily can take on and getting started with the AWS actually. So let me move on to the next slide. So in the IT industry, everything, everything right, right away, uh, all the things has been slowly moving to cloud, starting from enterprise to small startups. Everybody is migrating to cloud. So if, for example, this session is going to be an awareness session and it is deals with you the in, introduction to cloud computing and uh, how to gain knowledge in AWS uh, through self-driven, so self-learning. So with this knowledge, which I'm going to impart to you guys, you can be able to learn on your own actually, okay? No need to have any external training or something. If you follow the steps, which I am saying to saying today, so you can get the cloud knowledge actually. Without uh, So let's move on to the next slide. Introduction to cloud computing. So hope you guys, everybody have heard about cloud computing. At least like you must have heard over in the net, in the TV, in the YouTubes, everywhere actually, you must have heard. Cloud computing is nothing but the delivery of on-demand computing resources. So on-demand computing resources in the sense it is the delivery. Delivery in the sense like we can be able to easily access uh, the uh, on-demand computing resources, servers. 
databases, storage, platforms, infrastructure, and applications over the internet, actually. So everybody might be working in a computer, am I right? Now, right now, you are taking a session in the computer, in your laptop. So in your laptop, you have the CPU, RAM, and everything, am I right? That is called the physical server, actually, OK? So through cloud computing, you will be given access to various servers, so virtual servers, actually, and also the databases, actually, OK? And also a big storage. Storage in the sense, if you have a bigger size to store your data, actually, it's in computer, you can say, my computer storage is 100 CPU or 100 GB, sorry, not CPU, 100 GB. Okay, so this kind of platforms and what are the infrastructure and what are the applications? All these can be accessible and given over on-demand computations through internet, actually. All these resources will be provided to you, will be accessible by you over the internet. Okay, this is called cloud computing. Before the cloud computing came, uh, uh, we work uh, used to we, we will be working in a physical uh, computer in a physical thing. It is called as on premises actually. Okay. Nowadays, most of the data centers are migrating to many data centers are are physical data centers actually. Okay. And right now, it is migrated to the virtual data centers that is called cloud actually. So, in this coming pictorial representation, you can see the cloud. See here. You can see this picture, uh, cloud computing. So this is like you can see below private, public, and hybrid, and databases, and applications, and mobile storage, everything server have been inter have been interconnected with the cloud computing. Guys, uh, am I audible and you are following? Am I right? If you miss miss me, please inform me immediately. Suraj, am I audible? Hello? Yes. OK. So fine. So all this server, storage, mobile applications, and databases can be is interconnected in, into cloud computing. Through cloud computing, even in mobile, you can access the uh, cloud actually through storage, server, and everything. OK, this is a small intro about cloud, cloud computing. So in the next slide, I will explain you with a basic so I'm explaining to you in layman terms, actually, OK? So every a, a participant who are here, don't complicate, actually, even if you're non-technical, uh, you don't you don't have issue, actually. I will explain in a very layman terms so that he can, you can easily correlate, actually, OK? So let me move on to the next slide. Sorry. Right. So we are going to see the, what are the advantages of cloud computing. So first advantage is cost efficiency. Total cost of ownership upfront for starting a business is totally reduced. Actually. Okay. Main thing is cost of total cost of ownership. Suppose if you want to start a business actually, okay, you don't have to invest a lot of dollars, millions of dollars to start your own business actually. Okay. You have minimal cost which is involved to run your business actually that is i will explain how it will be why minimal cost okay for example if you want to buy a laptop or a server it will cost you 50000 rupees suppose if you want to do a project okay six months project or one year project you want to do a six months project you want to employ some resources you want to give them the physical resource am i right computer correct and also the server cpu ram everything okay each computer will cost you uh, almost 50,000 rupees. So for six months, after the end of the project, you don't require that resources anymore, okay? But if you buy the resource, you will end up in a bigger cost, 50 into 5, 25, okay? Almost uh, uh, 2 lakhs, 50,000 rupees it will cost actually. But the same thing, if you go for cloud, with one uh, computer or these things like uh, you, you can, you can. It is cloud is a pay as you go model actually. You will get your username and password in cloud computing. Okay, through the username and password authentication, you can accessible the cloud, able to access the cloud without any 
you don't have to purchase the cpu ram storage anything everything will be taken care by the cloud computing that's what instead of having a, a bigger money invested in a bigger money to buy lot of storage lot of cpu lot of ram every virtual servers uh, or physical servers so cloud computing will bring down all your cost actually suppose if you want to start a business okay through cloud computing you can start a business actually this is how the total cost of ownership is totally reduced actually okay and scalability and speed second uh, uh, advantages it is you can able to scale the resources in and out actually for example suppose for example assume you are globally you have a, a festival is there actually okay festival assume there is uh, if you are in a country like india or in other western country you celebrate christmas you celebrate diwali you celebrate uh, ramzan you celebrate bakrid everything am i right so during those times what will happen is like uh, you want to go and purchase in the uh, shops actually so during weekdays the sales will be higher actually the sales and the request will be higher for example if you want to have an online site like amazon if you want to purchase during the festive occasions you will be getting throughout the world you will be getting millions of requests actually through the web actually it will also it will it will be handled by the cloud computing technology actually for example throughout the world there are billions of customers okay if you have on prem things it will go down it will crash actually but if you have the cloud it can able to scale up and scale down based on your request actually during sales period peak sales what happened lot of people come and purchase in the online uh, stores actually similarly if you for example during uh, uh, if you want to have something in weekends what will happen is like uh, fest during festive occasions the sales will be high so number of requests will be high so if you want to pro so millions of uh, resources will be scaled up actually ec2 machines that is machines virtual servers will be scaled up based on the request from the resource actually from the source and during like uh, for example uh, if you take amazon website prime video site yeah, all everybody will be going to the uh, movie site am i right it, uh, it it is like hotstar everything like every all the movie sites if you take into amazon it is like amazon prime video it's all hosted in what it is hosted in cloud computing okay so millions of people across the globe they are watching the movie so millions of requests will be coming so the cloud computing can able to handle the request actually during the peak time for example assuming 10000 people are watching 10000 requests will be coming it will scale up 10000 virtual servers to handle the request so after during the weekdays what will happen the number of viewers will be reduced so the machines will be scaled out actually scaled out in the sense it will be uh, there is no use of machines actually am i right there is no request is coming so at that time you don't have to pay any money that nothing will be there actually okay this is how scalable scaling in increasing your machines and decreasing your request actually it is called scalability scaling up during the peak time and scaling down during the non peak time okay this is scalability and speed and and, and uh, unlimited storage space lot of unlimited storage space is there for example huge storage space 500 petabytes of data terabytes of data metabytes of data all the data kind of storage data can be accumulated and can be utilized by the cloud computer okay so unlimited in a computer for example if you buy a computer you will get only 100 gb max 2 gb 200 gb but during using cloud computing using the username and password during the authentication you can be able to access petabytes may, may metabytes actually gigabytes so 100 gigabytes or 200 300 400 1 terabyte but petabytes of data can be accessed so huge amount of storage actually okay so backup and recovery so for example you everybody you go during the during the traditional on premises model they will try to take the backup and try to recover actually for for example there is a huge volume of data you want to preserve the data it should not uh, the computer should not crash actually so that why whenever the, the if you take the backup of the data you can retrieve it at any time this kind of things will be backup and recovery can be 
than using cloud computing. Okay. And we can go global in minutes, actually. Go global in this minutes in the sense you can create and deploy a web, web application, your website. You can create and deploy, which used to be a lot of time consuming process before the invention of cloud. Now, after cloud is invented, what will happen is you can go global in minutes. You don't have to wait, spend hours and hours of time. Okay. You don't want to waste your resources. You can be able to create and deploy your web application in a few minutes, actually. Okay. This is one of the best advantage of cloud, actually. So, all together, we have discussed what are the advantages of cloud. Okay. Next slide, we will see what is a virtual machine. Before the invention of cloud, we have the virtual machine actually. Okay, before actually the cloud came, what you are dealing with, what you are, what you are discussing about virtual machine is how the cloud evolution came at. Before actual cloud came, we have the virtual machine concept. So it is virtual machine is called as a guest machine. It is a software simulation of a hardware platform that provides a virtual operating environment for guest operating system. For example, if you have have a laptop, you will be having a Windows software installed on it, right? That is called the operating system. On top of that operating system, you will be installing another thing. It is called virtual machine. Okay. Inside the virtual machine, we have a hypervisor. It is also called as a virtual machine monitor, which used to actually monitor the program that runs on actual host hardware platform and supervises the execution of guest operating system on the virtual machines. Virtual, you will have a laptop and the laptop will be having an operating system. On top of the laptop, you will be having a virtual machine will be installed. That is machine inside a machine, actually. Okay. In that machine, you will be having a guest operating system. Maybe Linux, maybe Unix, anything. On top of it, you can run your applications. So the hypervisor, which is used to monitor the execution, actually. That's what they're saying. So... We will move to the next slide. What is the difference between the traditional and virtualized computer? Okay. So this is the pictorial representation of the, uh, what is a traditional computer look like? See here below, you have the underlying hardware. On top of the hardware, you have the host operating system. On top of the host operating system, we have the application running. This is how our traditional model is actually. This is how, uh, from the previous years, how we are working in computers, actually. So after the evolution of virtualized computer, see here, you have the hardware, underlying hardware. On top of the hardware, you have the virtual uh, hypervisor, which you used to monitor. On top of the virtual VMM, we have the GUST operating system, uh, just GUST hardware. See here, this is called uh, VMware. On VMware, we have, this is called uh, Windows OS. On top of it, we have virtualization layer, and this is called the hardware. On top of the hardware, we have the guest OS, probably Linux, Unix, or something. Okay. On top of it, we have the application, which we can run our application. So this is how the traditional virtualized computer looks like. So guys, did you understand? Any doubts? Guys? Any, any, any questions actually, let, let us may, make it a little bit interactive. If you have any small doubts, please ask me. Let us pause it for a few minutes, few seconds. So any doubts, guys? What is cloud computing? What are the advantages of cloud computing? What is a virtual machine? What is the difference between the traditional and virtual computer? Any doubts, guys? Suraj, I am audible, am I right? Surat? Yes, you are audible. Okay. So let us take this as no, as audience are not responding. So I take this, they are not having any doubts. I will move to the next slide. So we are going to see uh, what are the cloud computing services are there actually. Okay. So this is IAS. IAS is nothing but infrastructure as a service. And second one is PaaS, platform as a service. And third is SaaS. Software as a service, actually. Okay. So, first, when you learn into cloud computing, you should understand how a cloud computing will work. And you should know the what are the advantages of the cloud computing. And third thing, how it evolved, how the cloud computing has evolved in the recent times, actually. How it started. 
previously before cloud cloud computing, what was there the recent advancement? Virtualized machine simulation. Okay, that's what we are seeing. Now we have entered into the topic. What is a cloud computing services? What are the basic services in cloud computing? That's what there are three types of cloud computing services, which is IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. See below the pictorial representation. You have the platform, you have the application, you have the infrastructure, you have the laptop, desktop, server, mobile, and tablets all connected to the cloud. Okay, good. So let's move to the next slide. So we will see what is a platform as a service. Uh, sorry, infrastructure as a service actually. IaaS. So IaaS is nothing but infrastructure as a service. It is an on-demand provision and manage virtualized infrastructure resources such as server, storage, and network to the consumer through internet. Okay. Uh, let us uh, let me explain about what is an infrastructure as a uh, what is an infrastructure as a service. Suppose we are sitting in a virtual hall actually. Okay. Everybody will be provided with the, everybody will be sitting in front of a computer speaker. Okay. So these are all the, uh, I will be sitting in a chair, am I right? So for attending the session, if this is called an infrastructure. We are into the seminar of cloud computing. This is called as a project actually. So what are the infrastructure in the involved in this? We have the chair, computer, machine, speaker. Okay. Everything, all the resources are called as an infrastructure. Similarly, in a software project, you can consider the infrastructure. They will give you the server, they will give you the storage, they will give you the network, they will give you the virtualization. All the cloud service provider, you have to go for a place, your internet will be there, user will be there. They will provide you the infrastructure. You don't have to pay any money for the infrastructure. All the infrastructure will be provided by the cloud computing company. Okay. So you have to just pay for the infrastructure. Okay, you have to just acquire the infrastructure and try to execute your projects. There are a lot of companies in the external world. In many companies are called as IAS companies. Actually, they are called. They will just provide the infrastructure, everything. Then you have to do your projects. Actually, they are called as infrastructure company. So this service is called as infrastructure as a service. Actually, okay. And second thing is platform as a service. Okay. What is platform as a service? They will previously they have given all the infrastructure. In this platform, they will provide you the platform, LAMP stack, this Apache, Tamcat, and uh, PHP, everything, every, every platform they will give you. Using the platform, you have to develop and deploy your applications and services. This is called platform as a service. Okay. Primarily, you have to remember three different types of services. Infrastructure as a service service, which I explained previously, platform as a service, and third thing is software as a service. Software service service is nothing but a software licensing and delivery model in which a software is licensed on a subscription basis and is centrally hosted on cloud. Actually. It's nothing but <clears throat> previously they will provide it to the platform, they provide the infrastructure. They'll, for example, in your laptop, you are buying the micro, you are buying the, all the software somewhere, right? Uh, buying the entire software, so and you are buying the software and installing it. But SaaS means what? You don't have to buy the entire software actually. You just have to pay the money for how much period you are using the software. That is licensing. Just to pay for your license and use the subscription. And it is centrally hosted on the cloud actually. Okay, this is called software as a service actually. So many companies are called SaaS companies. Okay, it is uh, cloud is always pay as you go model. You don't have to own your infrastructure. You just have to pay as you go. Just pay for the resource. It is typically you can say cloud computing is living in a rented house. You go for a, another country or any other place for a project. You rent a house for six months or one year or twelve months, six months. You pay for the six months rent. Once your project is over, you vacate it. Similarly. If you have a project, you take, take the subscription of cloud, do the project for six months. Once your project is over, then come out of the cloud, actually. You don't have to pay after the six months. So your business cost will be totally reduced. But previously, on from what happened, you have to pay the entire cost, actually. Whether you are using the pro, whether you are using the resource or once your project is completed, that is up to you. You have to pay the, bear the entire cost. But after cloud invention came, what happened is 
you pay pay for money for the time period you are using the cloud that's it it is just living in a rented house actually okay so that is the main advantage of cloud pay as you go model so right now we have discussed about what the different types of services now we move into the deployment so see here in this pictorial representation you have the servers storage network virtualization operating system middleware run time data and application and on prem so these are the on prem on premises how in the non premises everything will be owned by individual or by an organization okay next we will come to the ias ias in I, I, ias in the sense infrastructure as a service model actually they will cloud computing will provide the server they will provide the software they will provide the network you are, they will provide the virtualization you have to get the operating system middleware runtime data and application okay till virtualization everything will be taken care by cloud and after that we have pass platform as a service so in this operating system and middleware and runtime will also be provided by the cloud you have to take care of about your data and application finally we have the saas actually it is called a software as a service everything will be provided data and application and software everything provided on a license basis by the cloud this is how the difference between on prem ias pass and saas okay so let's move to let's move to a topic what are the different uh, types of deployment models are there in the environment okay there are three types of deployment models are there one is public cloud private cloud and hybrid cloud okay these are the three type of cloud deployment models so first you have to know what is cloud computing what are the advantages of cloud computing how the cloud computing has evolved from virtual machines what are the cloud computing services what is the cloud deployment model actually okay three type of cloud deployment models are there one is public cloud second is private cloud third is hybrid cloud okay these are the three different types of cloud models deployment models actually. okay let us see one by one what is a public cloud public cloud is a cloud infrastructure provisioned for use by the general public individuals or business so public cloud is nothing but it is a infrastructure cloud infrastructure it is provision for use for the general public anybody any individual or business can use the public cloud okay or arm hello uh so it, uh, it it will be used by the general public actually okay sorry i had a call in between sorry for that and public clouds uh, are owned by service providers and are accessible through a subscription okay so uh, public uh, public clouds are owned by service providers and are accessible through a subscription any public can use the public cloud actually. okay many public clouds are available including google app google engine amazon web services microsoft azure ibm blue cloud and salesforce.com actually okay so public cloud is nothing but any public or individual business or an enterprise can use the application examples are yeah, amazon web services google app engine microsoft azure ibm blue cloud and salesforce so this is called as a public cloud actually next we move to what is a private cloud private cloud is a model of cloud computing that provides a dedicated cloud environment to a single organization so private cloud is suppose if i am working in a hcl so hcl will be having a cloud so hcl internal it team will be only having access to the cloud nobody will be having access public or the business cannot be access this private cloud actually only the employees of that particular organization it team can able to access by an inverse it team behind that organization firewall so an organization has more control of its compute resources okay so an organization can will be having more control so like, like public cloud here in private cloud nobody can easily access it is limited to a private organization to one company actually okay this is the difference between public and private third hybrid cloud hybrid cloud is a cloud computing model that combines one or more public cloud and private cloud environments through a secure connection such as vpn connection or least link 
which allows sharing of data and applications between the different cloud environments. Hybrid is nothing but the combination of both public and pub, private. Here we can share the data and applications between the different cloud environments. VPN is virtual private network. Okay. So these are the cloud three different uh, cloud deployment models. Actually, guys, till this time, till this topic, do you have any more doubts, guys? If you have, say, we will have, we will give few minutes here to few seconds here to understand your doubts. Actually, are you following with me? Anybody from the participants? Can you say yes or no? So that they can talk or not, uh, they are muted, am I right? They cannot talk or what actually? Sora? Hello? Hello? Participants cannot talk, Suraj? No, they, they cannot they talk. Cannot. Okay, then fine, no problem. Let me move on to the next slide. Hope everybody has understood a fair understanding of the slide till now. So let me move to the next slide. So now can, comes into the inter, the actual interesting section actually. Okay. So we are into the cloud era, am I right? Most of you must be aware. Uh, this is the cloud era. Lot of enterprises throughout the world, uh, in US, Europe, Middle West, everywhere, every country in Middle East, in Asia Pacific region, everywhere in Australia. I don't know participants are from which country. But I people, I assume that you people are from different parts of the world. So everywhere you can look at the things actually. Lot of cloud computing projects are coming on. So who are the key players? Amazon, what first we will see what are the various cloud providers actually. Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and Alibaba Cloud. Okay. Now in this topic, we are going to see AWS actually. So it is a magical word. It is the prominent world which is ruling the cloud world actually. Amazon Web Services being the market leader, number one in the market for the cloud computing world. In the cloud computing world, AWS is leading the market. They are the global players everywhere, everywhere in each and every part of the world. AWS has been prominent actually. Many enterprises starting from small startups, medium businesses, small startups, all the things, all the enterprises are using the AWS actually. Okay, so we are going to dwell somewhat little bit deeper into AWS. What is an AWS actually? AWS is nothing but Amazon Web Services. It is one of the cloud provider in cloud computing world. Cloud computing service, one of the prominent cloud computing world number one and world global leader. It is called as Amazon Web Services actually. So Amazon Web Services is the world most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud platform. It is the most comprehensive and broadly, every company is used to adapt the AWS services. You have the Amazon site, you have the Amazon Prime Video, everything actually. They are starting from business, seller, AWS, e-commerce, everything. And movie sites, everything is Amazon is, is prominently leading the world actually. They are offering over 200 fully featured services actually from data centers globally. So they right now when this slide is prepared, it is almost 200 services actually are there. But right now there are almost 270 or more than 270 services have been there. It is the most, most comprehensive and broadly adapted cloud platform offering over more than 270 future services from data centers globally. So you know who is the founder of Amazon Web Services AWS? Jeff Bezos, okay. He is from America. And he is, the, he is the one person who has founded AWS, Amazon Web Services, okay, during the early 200s, actually, 2000, actually. And uh, he, he was very successful businessman. He, he, can, he, he was very successfully in implementing the cloud projects throughout the world. There are millions of customers for an AWS, including the, I told you, am I right? Including the fastest growing startups, largest enterprises, and leading government agencies, everybody, startups, enterprises, government agencies, everybody are using AWS. Why? Why they need AWS? I told you the advantages have AWS, cloud computing, to lower the cost. So if, if a business is to start a business is upfront is totally reduced actually, to lower their cost. 
become more agile and more innovate faster. We can able to innovate and become more agile actually. So this is one of the bigger advantage of AWS actually. AWS is a comprehensive cloud computing platform that includes infrastructure service. So I told you, I'm right. Previously, I described about infrastructure as a service service, I'm right? So cloud computing platform, it includes infrastructure as a service, platform as a service offerings actually. So it includes both. AWS services offer scalable solutions for compute, storage, databases, analytics, and more. Okay. It includes all the analytics solutions actually. It give you compute, it will give you the storage, it will give you the database, it will give you the analytics, everything. So offers compute, power, database, storage, content delivery, and other functionality to help your business. It helps your business to scale and grow, actually. Okay. It is helping your business to scale and grow. So these are the primary, this is how one of the prominent uh, cloud providers in the world, it is AWS, having fully 270 services. In our session today, we are going to see the four basic services of AWS services, AWS cloud computing. Okay, let me move on to the next slide. So this is a typically, when you log into the username and password, how a AWS console will look like. The console will look like this thing. You click it, go to EC2 Glow here. This is the pictorial representation of an AWS console. Guys, my session is pure and pure and awareness session. It will, it will give you deep insights on, uh, on cloud computing topics, what are the basics, and how to get started with AWS actually. Okay. So let me move on to the, what are the different types of AWS services are there classically in a high level? The AWS services are classified, compute, storage, database, network and content delivery, analytics, machine learning, security, identity, and complex. Okay, these are the different types of AWS services. We can classify 270 services within this basic type section. Okay, there are over 270, more than 270, every time, every quarter, every year, year on year, day by day, there are a lot of inventions, a lot of reinventions happening in the AWS world. Lot of new inventions are coming. Okay. This is now Gen AI came, generative AI, quantum computing, everything has came, machine learning, everything has came actually. Okay. So let me move on to the basic service. So EC2 instance, what is an EC2 instance? It is one of the basic, very, very basic uh, service actually. So you have a computer, you are watching my session on a computer or a mobile, am I right? That is called as a physical server, okay? Physical server, it will be having the monitor, it will be having the CPU, it will be having the uh, pro processing units, uh, central processing units, RAM, everything, am I right? Memory, capacity, everything. Similarly, that is called as physical server in your house. But what is called as EC2? Elastic Compute Cloud. That is used for running your applications on Amazon Web Services infrastructure. That is called as the uh, virtual server. So virtually you are hosting a server, am I right? That is called as virtual server. Before you come into the virtual server, so I will talk in India, you know, Amazon is classifying uh, many regions, many availability zones, many data centers. There are many availability zones. Data zones, uh, data centers will be there and region, first the region will be there in this way. Regions are Asia Pacific, India, US, Europe, everything. These are called as regions. Within the regions, we have availability zones actually. Within the availability zones, we have data centers. In India, uh, we have a region, it is Mumbai region actually, Mumbai, where we have a AWS data center is available actually. Okay. And in India, they started long time before, and in January 2023, they started in Hyderabad. Okay, which is uh, very closer to countries nearby India. Okay, so similarly, there will be a lot of regions across the globe, Australia, everywhere, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Middle East, everything. Okay, Europe, everywhere. So EC2 is nothing but, so everywhere, this data centers will be there. Within the data centers, your servers will be hosted. But virtually we are accessing the servers through EC2, through AWS console actually. It is a virtual machine that represents a physical server for you to deploy your applications. Okay, 
I told you in the first beginning itself. Instead of purchasing your own hardware and connecting it to network, instead of purchasing your own computer and connecting it to network, Amazon gives you unlimited virtual machines. You can. You, I told you during the peak sales, Ramzan, Christmas, Diwali time, unlimited, unlimited virtual machine will be scaled up to process to run your application request actually. Okay. When the hardware is automatically taken care by AWS by the cloud computing itself. Okay. So we have on-demand instance, reserved instance, spot instance, savings plan. Amazon also offers the additional option of Amazon EC2 dedicated host. Okay. This is the primary service, one of the very basic service. If you are logging into AWS, you should be very aware of what is an EC2, how to spin up the EC2. What is an EC2 is nothing but Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay. So with this understanding, let me move on to the second uh, service that is called a simple storage service. It is called as an S3. The primary S3 is since you can use it for host your websites also. In an S3, a bucket will be there actually. A bucket is a container for objects and describes location, logging, accounting, and access control. A bucket can hold any number of objects which are files up to 5 terabytes. A bucket has a name that must be globally unique. Inside the S3, we have something called as classified as a bucket, which is used to, which is a called as a container, which can, uh, for objects, which can hold your files. The limitation of the file size is up to terabytes, five terabytes. And you can have only the unique name. One name cannot be, one bucket name cannot be utilized, used by another bucket. So it is used to be unique. So the fundamental operations corresponding to HTTP actions are HTTP, bucket.s3.amazon.a. So using S3, you can create a website actually. Okay, within the S3 bucket, you can post a new object or update an existing object. You can put the object into the S3 bucket and you can update an existing bucket and you can get an object from the bucket and delete an object from the bucket. Okay, so I think if you're not, you take uh, in Lerman terms, it is nothing but to hold some files actually, images, Unstructured data, structured data, everything will be hold in the uh, simple storage service. Actually. It is one of the basic service which you will be used in all the projects actually. Okay. So with this service, just learn about the basic service actually. Okay. A bucket has a flat direct structure despite the operation given by the interactive web service. Actually. Okay. So this is what an S3 is actually. So next I move to the next uh, service. IAM, okay, identity access management actually. In this crowd, in our webinar, if someone is having, is from the system admin background, who is a DBA, database administrator, or who is from the system administration side, it is useful for them. IAM service is called as identity access and management service. For example, it is used to give roles and privileges. So in the AWS console for all the services, who can able to access, who cannot able to access. This kind of roles and access to the services can be normally given by the IAM users actually, okay? This is called, it's a web service that helps you securely control access to AWS resources, okay? AWS resources are what? Nothing but EC2, S3 and everything. Suppose if somebody wants to spin up an EC2 machine, they should have an, ECT role that they should have a IAS3 role to spin up an S3. This kind of access will be given user. Suppose it is kind of an, uh, for example, if you are working in an organization, you will be given an identity card, am I right? To enter into an organization. The department which is given the identity card is called as the IAM department in cloud, cloud world actually. Okay. That is the department which, you, which, you, which gives, gives you the identity in order to enter into the premises, in order to enter into the AWS services, they will give you the access. Allow you to delegate access to users or services that normally don't have access to your organization's AWS resources. So normally you won't be having AWS access. Only through IAM, you can able to access your resources. Okay, are designed to perform three key tasks actually. Identify, authenticate and authorize, meaning only the right person should have access to computers, hardware, software apps, any IT resources are performed specific tasks. Okay, IAM roles define the set of permissions for making, 
AWS service requests, whereas IAM policies define the permissions that you will require. You simply use first once you when once you log into the AWS. Yeah, ma. Hello. So uh, IAM role defined the uh, roles of permissions for making AWS request, whereas IAM policies define the permissions that you will require actually. Okay, IAM roles define the set of permissions. So nothing but it is an admin department which is giving you the access for particular users actually. Sorry for the call. Sorry guys actually. So uh, it is giving the permissions. So once you log into the AWS console, it is called as the root user. That is called the administrative user actually. That administrative user will give access to which user is called as developer, which user is called as the admin, which user is called as the designer. Everything will be given by IAM. This is the primary advantage of IAM actually. Okay. Let's move on to the next slide. CloudWatch actually. Okay. CloudWatch is nothing but it's a monitoring and management service. Okay. Let me do one thing. Hope you can see my screen. So one of the screen has task manager has popped up, am I right? Right now you can see in front of your monitor, am I right? See here, CPU is 42%. It is spiking up and spiking down. Memory is 82. Disk is 3%. Network is 1%. Okay. Cloud watch in cloud computing, what, what will do? See here, 100% it reached actually. Okay. When it reaches 100%, the system will crash. For such kind of scenarios, what they in cloud computing service, they came up with a service called CloudWatch. Once your CPU reaches 100%, it will throw an alert. Once it reaches 80%, it will show you it reaches the threshold so that your system may not go down actually. In order to configure such alarms, you need a service that is called CloudWatch. To configure service such as called CloudWatch. Okay, it is nothing but a monitoring and management service that provides data and actionable insights for AWS hybrid and on-premises application and infrastructure resources. You, don't, you just have to remember that CloudWatch is nothing but basically a uh, monitoring service actually. Okay, I told you in the, from the task manager, it will be configured to the CloudWatch, CloudWatch events. It will be basically captured on metrics. So it is used to Monitor EC2 instance, DynamoDB tables, Amazon RDB, RDS DB instances, RDS is relational database systems actually, okay, as well as cloud metrics. So nothing but what in a high level in Lerman terms, whenever if a threshold exists for a CPU, disk, everything, it will show an alarm. If there is a threat is detected, CloudWatch will immediately throw an alarm, which is used to detect that there is that you are some under some kind of issue actually. So it is a taking precautionary action. This kind of things is uh, is taken over by the CloudWatch service actually. Okay. So let's move on to the this is what these are the four basic services: EC2, S3, IAM, and CloudWatch. So I have given you the very high level insights about all the basic four services. What you have to do is. After I complete my session, I will give you some tips how to self-learn on this topic section, okay? Through this, you can able to dive deep, deep dive into this topic section. So typically, how the retail customer service center will look like? What is the AWS infrastructure will be like this? So this is a typical pictorial representation of an architecture diagram for an AWS will be looking like, okay? So now we are moving to the interesting topic. What are the different types of certifications in cloud? So this is a very interesting topic. Once you know what is cloud computing, advantages of cloud computing, evolution of cloud services, deployment models, what are the different types of cloud service providers, what is AWS, what are the primary computing services, and what are the four basic services, okay, architecture, what is the cloud console look like? Then we are getting into the different types of AWS service certifications. Okay, first certification is cloud practitioners. First of all, I will say you cloud, you are in the technical world, am I right? Don't think that cloud is only for technical people. You are a marketing guy, you are a HR, okay? You are a PMO, you are a project manager, you are a project program manager, 
you are pmo ya pmo office person you are hr sales marketing everybody can do the cloud computing thing you become the project manager for the cloud computing projects you become the pmo for the cloud computing projects okay you become the marketing guy for the cloud computing company so those kind of people can able to certify themselves and clear the certification that is called cloud practitioner okay so don't worry it is for non technical people you can do this certification for technical people who want to know the basic services of aws computing you can certify yourself as aws certified solution architect associate actually okay you want to become know all the services you want to become an associate architect do this third is aws certified sysops administrator associate actually if you want to become a sysops administrator you are a system admin you are a unix admin you are a linux admin do this certified sysops administrator associate if you are a developer try to do the aws developer associate if you want to scale up your knowledge to the professional level in architect you can do the aws certified solution architect professional if you are a certified if you are a devops professional you want to do a certification in aws try to do the aws certified devops professional okay these are the different types of aws certifications available in the market so based on your expertise knowledge level based on your specialization choose one of this there are lot of certifications available in the market i got listed here very basic certifications where people classify and they want to certify themselves actually okay if you want to certify as a network guy there is a certification for network if you want to get certified as a security guy there is called a security certificate if you want to get certified as a data specialty guy data certification okay thank you so now we are getting into the how to create a aws account actually for example everybody go point to the site for example go go to google go to aws.com so here www.aws.com you go here complete sign up just like a gm just like a email you are signing up sign up for this actually okay click this it will take you to the page sign up page actually create a new aws account okay just go here and create a new aws account so this page will go to this page so here you have to give your root email address it will ask the what is the username verify this so in order to register this aws site you need you need to have a master card or visa card or debit card actually they will deduct 2 rupees from your account to verify that is you are the correct person who are creating this access so they will give you back the 2 rupees into your account actually okay and your account will be generated created and you will be having 12 months one year free access to all the aws uh, resources ec2 s3 everything but be careful once you create your aws account there are lot of services which you create practicing it if you are not closing or terminating the instance at the end of your practice or if you are using not the free tier it will cost you more money actually be careful actually but 12 months is free so with this basic uh, cloud computing knowledge which i have imparted you right now with the basic knowledge and basic session with this things you can able to create the things go to documentation there is another site in aws just like this process gets create your aws account go to your google.com put aws educate Try to create a login here. Actually, okay. AWS Cloud Services for Education. So.
So it will give you a lot of documentation. Register here, go for documentation. Everything is free here actually. Okay. So don't worry. With this, you can able to able to create uh, your AWS account actually, and uh, you can able to subscribe. You can able to learn and everything. And don't remember, everybody, please, once you acquire the basic knowledge, you try to create the LinkedIn profile actually. Okay, LinkedIn.com is how you are able to look into projects. For example, I will share you my LinkedIn uh, in this thing. My, my LinkedIn address in the, in the chat box. Everybody get connected with me. So everybody try to after you learn and you develop your knowledge on AWS, if you're applying for jobs, in order for the jobs, if you are looking for a jobs, actually, the primary mandatory thing is to have the LinkedIn profile, actually. Okay. You try to create a profile. This is my LinkedIn profile. I will ping you. So let me unshare the screen. Let me go to the chat window. So I think the chat window is not enabled. Suraj, can you enable the chat window for me? Suraj? I, th I think it should be enabled for yeah. everybody. Meeting chat, uh, it is chat window is not getting enabled for me. Mm, chat is only available during the meeting, it is showing. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think it, everybody who joined this meeting should have the access to the meeting chat. Uh, meeting chat, they are able to ping, but for me it is showing, is only available during meeting chat actually. Okay, there are some technical issues actually. But so that you can uh, able to ping my, uh, let me, uh, you can able to ping uh, my, 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 I'm bringing you my uh, LinkedIn ID to you. Please bring in the chat to them. And also my WhatsApp number. Please bring in the chat actually. Sorry, I kept it wrongly. The number. One minute. Yeah, I will. I have. Uh... Have done that. Can you ping in the chat uh, my number and the yeah? Okay, guys, please try to get connected with me in LinkedIn and also in my WhatsApp. So thanks, audience, for patiently listening to my uh, session today. This is a very very basic session actually. So those who are new to the cloud computing world, they can able to. Uh, yes, somebody has asked a question. IAM can integrate single sign-on with Azure Entrant IDM, right? Yes, correct. Single sign-on is, is, is called a LDAP actually, but yeah, giving access, AD, everything will be is related to IAM actually. Okay, so that why it is very much related. So uh, now we we open the floor for the Q and A sessions actually, Suraj. Participants, if you have any doubts actually, please ask your doubts actually. Let us clarify your doubts. Any doubts? I think uh, will they can able to ask the doubts, uh, Suraj? Suraj? Yes. Yeah. Okay. One of the person is asking between what is the difference between AWS and Azure? Yes. As I told you, AWS is 
is amazon web services actually it is one of the cl in cloud computing there are different providers are there am i right i told you am i right aws is the primary it is for aws it is for the uh, amazon product actually you have different products you have different competitors am i right azure is microsoft product that is the difference actually okay that is the ba basic difference between aws and azure there are two different products in cloud computing world which are related to cloud computing any other doubts guys so this is very very basic session hope it will be fruitful for you guys please ask your doubts make use of this opportunity so this is a very very basic session which is so if you go into the net you will get lot of topics lot of things but i have summarized here very basic things actually i have explained to you in very layman terms hope you can understand this the guys you can get started into cloud computing so guys any doubt please ask me suraj they can unmute and they can ask questions am i right or they are they not allowed to unmute actually uh they they are not allowed to be unmuting but uh, if oh. there is anybody who wants to be talking i can grant them uh, mic access yeah, yeah okay so anybody okay there is another question from mrt actually is service and operation have similarities between azure and aws see azure and aws both are cloud computing providers actually concept wise everything is same for example in in aws we are calling the ec2 as an elastic compute cloud in azure we will called as the different word buzzword concept is similar operation service everything is similar but name will be changing the flavor will be changing okay you are going for an ice cream shop you are ordering for butterscotch vanilla and am i right but the ice cream is the same product but you are getting different flavors am i right similarly cloud computing is same okay you are getting different flavors azure is microsoft product aws is amazon product service and operations are everything is same okay so don't uh, think aws azure google all are providers actually aws is started by a uh, uh, guy called jeb bezos actually okay so don't uh, this is very 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 basic basic explanation so with this knowledge there are lot of service if you want to dwell deep go to aws.com lot of websites are there go to aws educate go to youtube get subscribe to lot of uh, youtube actually get connected with me i will share you my uh, get connected with me in linkedin i will share you my uh, youtube uh, links actually okay my youtube channel link will be there i will give you get connected ping me in whatsapp get connected so any further doubts guys if you want to have any further doubts please call suraj he will give you the mic you can speak actually make use of this opportunity we will talk to talk with each other any doubts guys any doubts so suraj uh, that's it from my side suraj you can take over so awesome, i think uh, there's no more questions so thank you thank you uh um, sami for joining the session and uh, sharing all the knowledge i hope everybody here was able to understand and grasp all the basics so be sure to check out or try it out today itself and um, so that you will you know understand fully um you, so there is no certificate of participation but for the from the next onwards we will uh, give out for the certificate of participation for the aw sessions and uh, and i have already shared the community link we will have a uh, upcoming aw sessions in that community and where we will update whenever we have a next session or any challenges or any opportunity that you can use which is related to aws and uh, that's it for the day thank you everyone and thank you mr sami again for uh, taking the time and sharing his knowledge with everybody here
really appreciate that um looking forward to have you in the another sessions as well uh thank you everyone that's it for the day and uh, have a great rest of the saturday thanks a lot surag uh, and skyava uh, for providing me the excellent platform to uh, present a session on aws in the global com in the in the for the global audience it's been a wonderful experience to share my knowledge with this uh, esteemed uh, audience actually thanks audience uh, for uh, listening to my session patiently hope it will uh, enrich your learning experience and uh, it will develop your knowledge on cloud and uh, wish you all grand success on becoming a cloud specialist with this basic knowledge you which i imparted to you all guys you will be successful in your cloud career so thanks thanks all so follow promote aws thanks thanks suraj and skyva once again thanks a lot thank you thank you bye